Often the evolution of humans explained in terms of natural selection without sexual selection. The question is, trying to understand the big picture of human evolution, is this possible? To make my point, I'm going to talk shortly about three important topics in human evolution. Walking upright, adaptations in our mouth and a big brain. I will try to explain these characteristics by natural and sexual selection. I will keep it simple. Although I will emphasize for each topic natural or sexual selection, it is important to realize that according to me, both are at work at all times. Natural selection is a process in which individuals with favorable genetic traits are more likely to survive and reproduce and pass their genes to the next generation. Looking at this nice European water snake, its size, morphology and color, it's easy to imagine that these characteristics are the result of natural selection. It is a snake you may find example in, for example, in France or Spain, often in rivers hunting at fish. Its size, it becomes angry, its size, for instance, is likely an adaptation to available prey size. And its color is probably an adaptation to avoid being attacked by predators and to reach prey. Sexual selection is a process in which individuals with desirable traits in the competition for sex are more likely to pass their genes to the next generation. Think about the peacock's tail, the antlers of a deer, or the jaws of a stag beetle. Let me try to explain how important sexual selection is. Life is immortal. I'm not saying that you are immortal, but life is. There are organisms that replicate simply by dividing in half. One becomes two, and two becomes four. Hence, they normally do not die. They can be killed by starvation, heat, or lack of water. But if this does not happen, they just keep halving and multiplying. It is the essence of life. Imagine there is an organism that is not able to replicate in this way. This organism is only able to replicate by sharing its genes with another organism. You and me are in this position. Of course this is what sex is and it matters with whom you are going to share your valuable genes. This is sexual selection, a tremendous force. It is about immortality. We think millions of years ago the climate in Africa changed dramatically. This resulted in the disappearance of large parts of tropical rainforest and the appearance of open woodland and savanna. Low vegetation and plants adapted to survive in drier conditions. The environment changed importantly and within a group of apes, the group we belong to. We see accordingly important changes in locomotion and food processing. Our ancestors started to walk upright. Bipedal apes like humans have relatively long legs in comparison with their arms. Look for instance at the size difference of this femur of a chimpanzee and human. Chimpanzees have relatively seen long arms and short legs. There are many skeletal details that tell us that apes started to walk upright. There are a number of ideas why apes started to walk upright. But the most parsimonious way to explain this is probably a biomechanical advantage. Chimps are able to walk upright, but it demands a lot of energy. Bipedalism is a smart way of moving in a hot, open environment in which you have to cover long distances to find food. A dramatic change in the physical world, the structure of vegetation resulted in adaptation of locomotion, walking upright. It is possible to explain the striking characteristics of humans by natural selection. Now close your mouth and try to move your mandible from side to side, from left to right and back. If I ask a gorilla to do the same thing, he or she can't. Why? Its mouth is locked because of the big canines that fit into diastemas. In a more open environment, plants started to protect themselves against too heavy grazing by herbivores. In this open environment, apes developed a grinding mill in their mouth to cope with tough vegetation. 
the canines became smaller to make a grinding motion possible, just as in humans. In the course of evolution, not only canines became smaller, but the surface of the molars became larger and animal thicker. Adaptations to cope with tough vegetation. In other words, just like bipedalism, it is possible to explain these changes by adaptation to a more open environment by natural selection. Considering our big brain, it is hard to explain only by natural selection. Sexual selection is also important. Chimpanzees and gorillas, our close relatives, have an average cranial capacity of about half a liter. Humans have an average cranial capacity somewhat lower than one and a half liter. Early hominins, like this Australopithecus, have an average cranial capacity of about half a liter, comparable with that of chimpanzee and gorilla. Later hominins, like this Homo erectus skull, have an average cranial capacity of about a liter. Of course, this is a rough indication because there is variation in cranial capacity in the above mentioned species. Importantly, in the course of evolution, brains within the genus Homo became bigger. Our brain is roughly three times the size of chimpanzee or gorilla brain. And these apes are very intelligent. The brain is a costly organ. It is used for language, telling stories, art, science, gaining a higher status. This is what makes us human. Why do we have such a large brain? This is hard to explain only by natural selection. It is easier to explain by taking into account sexual selection. Our brain is like a peacock's tail. It shows reproductive fitness. Put simply, a large brain gives you better stories. Better stories give you a higher status. And a higher status leads to more food and sex. In other words, more genes in the next generation and this is what evolution is all about. Sexual selection has been a tremendous force for millions of years and gave us attributes that make us human. Do you think that it is possible to understand the big picture of human evolution without taking into consideration sexual selection?